already, but uh, this morning um, I've uh, changed my message uh, to, to another message because I believe that uh, I was uh, planning on this yesterday and I believe that this is what the Lord wants and uh, this is what I, I, I think we need as a church uh, as we start our uh, as we start the new year so instead of uh, uh, going on with uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 I was scrambling uh, this morning over here to organize my uh, notes of uh, this preaching but uh, uh, by, by, by God's help I was able to do it so today we're going to be at the book of Malachi and uh, I would like to ask everyone to stand and uh, read with me Malachi uh, let's read the whole chapter of uh, chapter 1 wait wala And uh, 1 to 14. I'll read verse 1. Let's read this uh, responsibly. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This had been you by your means. Will he regard your persons, said the Lord of hosts. From the rising of the sun even into the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. <coughs> you said also, Behold, what a weariness is it! And ye have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering, should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord. But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, for the chapter that we have read. I pray, Lord, that you help us understand and that you help me as I uh, um, expound on the verses, dear Lord. I pray that you uh, challenge us this morning to uh, realize, dear Lord, your standard for each and every one of us in our worship, in our service, in our offering, dear Lord, and even, even uh, in the things that we do in the church, in the ministry. I pray, Lord, that um, uh, you... Rebuke us if need be, dear Lord, and uh, to be able to change our ways and to be worthy of our calling as we have uh, uh, studied yesterday. Uh, dear Lord, I pray, Lord, that you uh, be the one to be glorified uh, in our midst. For these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, thank you very much. You may be seated. Um, I had the uh, uh, mind of 
uh, preaching this from uh, yesterday's message that we have heard from our pastor to be worthy of our calling. And uh, as, as soon as he started preaching yesterday, I was thinking of this chapter in, in the book of Malachi. And, but, but last night I, uh, I worked on Nehemiah. I, I, I didn't plan on preaching this. Uh, but this morning, I finally made up my mind to preach uh, this one. And uh, we know that this book is uh, the last book here in the Old Testament. And we know that the Old Testament, uh, I've, I've been preaching th- uh, for the, uh, in the Old Testament for a long time now. And as I read uh, the Old Testament, we know and we realize that there are many things in the Old Testament that are not applicable to us. And uh, definitely our doctrine and our practices were not uh, from the Old Testament. We don't get those practices and doctrines that we do today in our church from the Old Testament. But there are things that do not change, like the God of the Old Testament is still the God of the New Testament. And the standard of God did ne- never change from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He's now, uh, uh, his program may have uh, it may be completely different from his program uh, to the Israelites and uh, to the church today, but he still expects people to worship him. He still expects people to serve him and to give their best in their service to him. And the standard that he expected from his people in the Old Testament is the same thing that he is expecting from us. If he wanted the people before to worship him, to give him sacrifices, uh, to, to serve him and to give their best, he still expects that from us. Though the offerings and all these things are not the same anymore. But they are in principle uh, still what God is looking for in his people. That's why here in uh, Malachi chapter 1, and if you read throughout the book of Malachi, you can see the displeasure that God has towards his people. You can see the, uh, his uh, disappointment. You can see his anger. But you, also, you can still also see his grace towards them. Why? Because reading this chapter, something would come into mind. Something came into mind. And uh, I, I thought, why is God not just killing these people? Knowing that in, the old, uh, not that in previous times when they failed, when they disobey God's direct command, they die. God kills them. But here, uh, reading these verses, you can see that they, uh, the things that they are doing are already extreme. In the eyes of God, they are too much already. And compared to what they did before, this is even something that is worse. They are offering lame sacrifices to God. They offer the blind to God. They even contempt the temple of God. And they even think that their service to God is a waste of their time. And if God will be challenged like this, knowing his character uh, uh, during this time, God would have just easily just killed them right there. But then God was so gracious that he didn't. Uh, but we know that one of the saddest uh, things that will happen here is that God will be silent uh, 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 towards them for a long time. And until t- we go to the book of Matthew, when God would resume the same message, when God starts to... Uh, when Jesus Christ himself starts to talk to these Pharisees, to these Jews, to what they're doing, he will resume this same message in Malachi, t- telling them that they are being hypocrites in their service, that they're being hypocrites in their worship, that all they're doing is lip service, man service to be seen of man, but not in the power of God anymore. And that is the message of God. That's why here in the chapter that we have read, God said, I will open the gospel and the opportunity to be worshipped and to be served, to, by everyone on earth, not just by the temple and not just by the priest. Now here in this chapter, we know that Malachi was talking straight to the priest, to the people who God charged to be in, uh, in charge of the temple, the sacrifices to lead the people to uh, worship to God. But while reading these verses, you get the sense that Malachi is extending the message to everyone in Israel. Not just the priests. Even though uh, God wanted him to specifically talk to these priests and make them realize what they are doing wrong, Malachi is actually talking to all the people and making them realize that what they're doing is also wrong. And, in, and we start with here in verse number 6 and 7. It says here, um, A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offered polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The temple, the table 
of the Lord is contemptible. Now, Malachi is offering this message straight to this priest. And God wanted him to talk to them. Uh, many times here in the, in the book of Malachi, uh, Malachi will say, Oh priest, okay, oh, he's talking to you. That's why in Malachi chapter uh, uh, 3, when he's talking about the tithes and all these things, he's talking to them. They're not doing it properly anymore. It's the same principle that uh, that same context here in chapter 1 applies in, in, in chapter 3. But here, we saw that here in uh, 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 Malachi chapter 1, what the priests were doing eventually trickled down to what the, the, the nation is doing. So, ang nangyari parang uh, like priest, like nation. Because people are looking at the priest. People are depending on the priest on what to do, how to worship God, how to serve God. And they are just imitating what they see from this priest. That's why we cannot, uh, we cannot remove the fact that when God places spiritual leaders, He has a, what they call this, a higher uh, account. We have higher accountability towards God. Because God has placed us in care of the spiritual lives of people. Here in Malachi chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, But ye are departed out of the way, talking to the priest. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. So now these priests, because they are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, because they are uh, 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 lackadaisical in their service to God, it trickled down to the people. And of course we know that uh, eventually in the future in the judgment seat of Christ the people cannot just point to the priests and the members cannot just point to the pastor or to the preachers blaming the pastors and the preachers uh, for what they have done but we cannot remove the fact that, that God, the people uh, the spiritual leaders that God has placed in the church has a higher accountability towards God and God is expecting more from us that that uh, what God is uh, uh, what they call this what God is giving in the Bible what God is uh, showing in the Bible and what God is commanding in the Bible should be done primarily by the people that God has placed in the position of leadership that's why uh, we as leaders we as preachers should be the ones as uh, being an example of service and worship and offering to the Lord. That's why if people see that uh, leaders or, or even the pastor himself is becoming uh, bored with the service, everyone's going to be bored. If, if, the, if, if, if they are seeing that it, it was the preachers, it's the leaders, it's the pastor who are always, what do you call this, uh, who never come on time on service, what kind of example will we give to people and people can can easily say if that's that's okay the priests are doing that that's what we're going to do as well that's why that's why uh, malachi 2 8 says you have caused them to stumble and and kahit na and even though we say that pagdatisod ka kasalanan mo naman talaga but still you still cause someone to stumble and uh, as, uh, some blame will still be uh, put to you. So let's go back to number up uh, to verse number six. It says here, a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. Now we know that Israel is God's uh, uh, chosen nation. They are His children, and they are also His servants. But now God said that uh, uh, what they call this um, uh, the norm is that a son will honor his father, and the servant will honor his master. And if you are my people and you are my servants, where is my honor? And if I am your master, where is my fear? If you are my sons, why are you not honoring me? Why are you not fearing me? This is God's, uh, what do you call this? This is God's uh, message to them, uh, to the priests specifically. If you are saying that you honor God, if you are saying that you worship God, if you are saying that you love God, I do not see it in the way that you live. I do not see it in the way that you uh, offer sacrifices in the temple. I do not see it in the way that you are leading the people. And this is a message to us as well. God is expecting that we live what we are saying. That we live up to our profession. Not only the preachers, but to the members as well. We profess that we are believers. We profess that we are the true children of God. We profess that we are people who have repented of our sins and placed our faith in Christ. Christ is now expecting us to live up to that profession. Hindi lang po basta natin sinabi na tayo ligtas. Paano mo napapatunayan na ligtas ka? It's not just saying that God is our Father. If he, if he is our Father, are we loving Him like our Father? If He is really our Master, do we respect Him like our Master? Or do we just say it with our lips and not with our 
actions. If you go to the book of Matthew, you see that even this priest, God, Christ himself in person, uh, as a human being, will tell them to their faces, what you're doing is hypocritical. What you're doing is just you're showing people that you are holy, that you are kind, that you are the ones obeying the law, but in your heart, you are not re you're really far from me. You're not really doing it. So now, Christ is saying that if I am really your master, if I am really your father, I don't see the fear. I don't see the respect. I don't see the love that you're supposed to be giving me. Why? Because in verse 7 says, you're offering polluted bread upon mine altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? Now, uh, going back to verses, the, the, the verse 6, hypocritical living says here that, and ye say, um, oh, what they got this? Oh, priest that despise my name. Now, if you are a believer, if you're a Christian who say that you love God and you are a follower of God, that you are a believer and you live as if you are not a believer, the Bible says that you are despising His name. That you are, I think you're even worse than people who say that there's no God. Because you do say that there's a God, but your actions do not prove that there's a God. We just say, or maybe we think we really believe that there's a God, but the way we live, we don't really believe that there is a God. For example, I believe that my... Uh, if, if I say that um, my father is, what do you call this, uh, when I was younger, uh, way, uh, much younger, my father would always spank me and my, 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 uh, my sisters. And we believe that whenever we do something wrong, we don't obey them, we're going to be punished by spanking or, or, uh, or, or uh, we'll, our privileges will be removed. But even though in our mind we say that we believe that, if we keep on disobeying him, it, deep inside our hearts, we still think that he may not do it, or he may, he may not, we may get away with it, or we may that, or, or he may just forget about this, this thing. So even though in our mind we believe that what he's going to do, but in our hearts somehow we don't believe that as well, because we, because that means we are not really afraid of what he's going to do, or we don't really respect him. And as believers, that what that is what we do, or that is our attitude towards God. We say that we love God, yet we don't give our best in service to God. You don't, we don't really love God. We, we preach behind the pulpit, we sing, and, and we, do, we do things, uh, uh, we say things that are good to hear, that are according to the Word of God, but as we have uh, uh, studied yesterday, if it is not balanced with the way we live, then we are just despising the name of God. Para bang binabastos na lang natin ang, 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 ang Panginoon. That's why if you are in your office you, or, 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 or wherever in your work and you hold the Bible, you share the Bible to people and yet they see that you're not living the, uh, the way that you're supposed to live, you are despising the name of God. That is how God looks at you. That's why uh, God said you are despising my name. And what's worse here is they answered Malachi and where, wherein have we despised thy name? Now, you can only imagine the situation during this time. Malachi preaching to them, t telling them what God had told him and saying, What? What did we do wrong? Anong ginagawa namin? Ginagawa naman namin kung anong sinabi? Anong, what, what, what did we do wrong? You can only imagine, uh, what, do you call, what do you call this, the emotion of Malachi. I don't know if uh, naranasan nyo na ito. Galit ka na, pinapagalitan mo na, tapos biglang, Oh, anong ginawa ko? Wala naman akong ginawa. Para bang lalo ka pang magagal 80 sa galit pag ganun yung response sa iyo. But Malachi, he was preaching to them, telling them, this is what you're doing. But then they say, what have we done? We've done nothing wrong. And <coughs> this is a sign that when we are, they call this, when we get used to living or to serving or to worshiping God only in our, with our lips, only in our outward appearance, mawawala po yung, hindi naman mawawala yung Holy Spirit, pero mawawala po yung sensitivity natin sa conviction ng Holy Spirit. Pagka po nasanay na tayo na basta-basta lang ang service, basta-basta lang ang pag-attend, basta-basta lang ang pag-preach, basta-basta lang ang pag-awit, basta-basta lang ang ginagawa natin para sa Panginoon, pag nasanay tayo, hindi na po na, there will come a time that we won't even realize that we're doing wrong towards, the, towards God. That when we get rebuked, we will say, what did I do? I'm here on time, I'm singing in the choir, I'm teaching in the outreach, but we don't realize that though we're doing all of these things, our hearts are already far away from God. God is not respecting our service. God is not accepting our worship. And God is not accepting our uh, offering towards Him. That's why ito po yung sa kanya. They have done this for a long time, for so long a time they, they, that they don't even realize. Imagine 
priests themselves do not realize that they're offering lame and blind sacrifices to God? What kind of, uh, uh, what kind of uh, attitude, what kind of spirit uh, 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 do they have right here already in Malachi chapter 1? Na sila mismo yung dapat nakakaalam ng batas ng Panginoon. Pero sila mismo hindi nila alam na mali na pala ang ginagawa nila. We don't know if they, uh, this is something that is authentic, this, the question. But then, this is what the Bible is telling us. Now, when we worship God and we offer our sacrifice to Him, we must realize that He doesn't look at the sacrifice and the worship first. He looks at us, the people who are offering. Kaya nga po pagdating sa Matthew, sinabi niya, uh, when, when God is preaching about the kingdom of God, God said, before you offer, ayusin mo muna ang iyong relasyon sa kapwa. Ayusin muna yung relasyon mo sa akin, and then will I res- uh, uh, accept your offering. That's why when we, tr- we offer, we sing, we preach, when we do things for God, what, what God is really concerned about is the state of your heart the state of your relationship towards Him. And if you are not right with God, if your heart is not right with God, you will never ever be able to do something right in front of Him. Even though people see that you're doing good, even though people see that you are, uh, you, you're doing service to God, but God knows your intents. God knows our hearts. And if God knows that our hearts are polluted, and if God knows that our hearts are far away from Him, we are just wasting our time. And this is something that uh, Malachi will, will uh, uh, go into later. Here in verse number 8, it says here, And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is that not evil? Isn't it wrong? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person? Said the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons? Said the Lord of hosts. Now one evidence that the priests were already very far away from God was they were offering polluted sacrifices. Again, I told you, they were the ones who who were supposed to know what to offer, how to offer, when to offer. They're the ones instructing the people. They're the ones who are, uh, what they call this, filtering the, uh, the sacrifices that are going into the temple. But they themselves are already so far away from God, they, they, they forgot about this. And it's mind-boggling that God would have, or Malachi would have to explain this to them. Para bang pastor ka, inexplain sa'yo na, pastor, kailangan nyo pong mag-aral ng Bible. Ah, kailangan pa ba yun? Alam ko, preach na lang basta, patawa na lang sa pulpito. Para pong sinasabi na, choir members, kailangan nyo mag-practice. Ah, kailangan pala mag-practice bago kumanta. Ngayon yung nangyayari dito. They don't realize that what they're doing, that they, they have already forgotten the very purpose why God placed them in the temple in the first place. They've forgotten that. And, and, and that is, for us, when we're reading this, it's mind-boggling, but we don't really know the situation during those times. Maybe people are re- have really uh, forgotten about God. And this is what happens when what you're doing to God becomes tradition and becomes uh, routine and becomes just something that you really have to do every Sunday. This is what happens. Kaya nga po pagka nasita ka dahil palagi kang late, tu, ilong minutes lang naman. Pero, merong time sa iyong Christian life na napaka-guilty mo na pag na-late ka. Pero ngayon, wala lang yung ilang minuto lang naman. Why? You see how far have we have come from, be, from uh, respecting God and His service to wala lang kwenta yung ilang minutong late. That is, that is the state of our hearts. And God does not, did not uh, lower His standard just because you're a long-time Christian now. He's not saying that, okay, you've been Christian for 20 minutes, uh, uh, it's okay if you're 20 minutes late. Every, uh, for 20 years, you've been a Christian for 20 years, it's okay if you're 20 minutes late every Sunday. He doesn't lower His standard. If God, God's standard is for us to do our best in service to Him, and that will never change. No matter how long you have been a Christian, no matter what your status is now, you may be a preacher now, that doesn't give us the license to be late in church. You may be a pastor now, that doesn't give you the license not to do soul winning. Right? That, that is not, uh, uh, if anything, if God, has, as long as God is promoting you in the church, you should be giving, giving even more uh, uh, to God. Even, even giving, uh, 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 what they call this, adding to your service to God. Lalo pa natin pinagbubuti habang binibigyan tayo ng promotion ng Panginoon sa loob ng simbahan. But the thing is, it, everything has become so routine na wala na lang po sa atin. And this is a condition of the heart. Nobody knows this. Only you and God. Nobody knows this. It's only God can see your heart. We cannot judge it. Kahit na, sabihin ko ng mga preacher dito, we, we mag-preach kami, we rebuke you for being like, we still cannot know your heart. 
Hindi po namin malaman kung bakit anong status ng heart mo sa, sa Panginoon ngayon. All we have to do is to preach the Word of God and let God work in your hearts. And if you, are, you're, you see that your heart is already far away from God, that everything has become uh, so routine and you don't even know that you're doing wrong towards God, then I pray, hope and I pray that revival will happen in your heart. That you will, reach, uh, you will renew that fire that you had uh, towards the people. Now Malachi ch challenged these people to why don't you offer these things to the governor? Now, dito pa lang sila matauhan. Nung binigyan yung exa example in a carnal setting. Nung spiritual setting, di nila gets. Pero nung sinabing, why don't you offer it to the governor? Bigla na lang. O ano? Dito pa lang sila natuhan. Why? Because their minds have already become uh, carnal. So carnal. And, and I, I believe it. I don't know if it's true, and, and some might get mad at me today, but this church may be full of people who are willing to sit down for hours and hours watching movies, basketball, Skyping, talking with your friends, but will not be willing to sit an hour under the preaching of the Word of God. Why don't, para bang, gaano na po tayo kakardal or earthly minded para po kaya nating tiisin ng maraming oras na, na gawin ng bagay sa mundo pero hindi natin pero naiinip tayo pagdating sa simbahan and this is something very basic right v very basic na ina-explain po natin sa mga bagong kristyano but we have regressed back to that state na hindi na po natin na-realize na ganun na po ang puso natin ngayon when, when, when the, the Word of God is being expounded 40 min, 30 minutes, we're still happy. 45, an hour, alas 12 na nagpipreach pa rin si Pastor, tumitingin na sa orasan. 12.30 na nagpipreach pa rin si Pastor, um, hindi na mapakali. Gumagawin na na sa chan. Why? Because na, naiinip na po tayo. Because that is not something that we love anymore. And looking at myself, even looking at myself uh, the other night, what, what do you call this? Pakasi, Ako po, madali po akong ma-stress, kaya bumili akong PS4, nagaano ako, uh, distress, yung detox po, ganyan. Hindi ko na-realize, sabi, sabi ko kay Jalil, tulog ka na, ano lang ako, may, ayusin lang ako, sabi sa kanya. Naglalaro ako, hindi ko na-realize, 12.30 na pala. Ah, pinatay ko na, natulog na ako. Tapos inisip ko, kailan ba ako huling nagtagal ng 12.30 na nag ng preaching? And yun, kagabi. Tumagal po ako, kagabi ng ganun. Kasi, napuyat kami. But, I, I was rebuked, but, Kasi sabi ko, bakit kaya kong tumagal doon? Pero sa pag salta ng Panginoon, minsan naiinip na rin ako. Minsan, nakakapagod. So that means, hindi ko naman sinasabi na pag nangyari sa'yo, hindi ka na worthy. But if you really, if that happens to you and you see that in yourself, be humble enough to admit it to God, to confess it to God, and ask God to help you to go back to what you were doing before. Yun lang, yun lang, yun lang, yun lamang po eh. Kasi even here in, in this chapter, God has all the reason to kill these people. But then God is so gracious, still giving them the chance to repent and go back to what they were doing. Now, in, in, uh, here in uh, verse number 10, Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. For I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. So maybe God or Malachi himself had enough of these people. He said that, why don't we just close the door of the temple? Why don't you just not offer sacrifice for him? Why? Because Malachi said it is vain. Uh, what, did, what, did he, what words did he use this here? Neither you kill their fire for not, for not, for I have no pleasure in you, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. So Malachi is telling them that you're doing all of this for no reason. In your mind, you're offering to God. In your mind, you're glorifying God. In your mind, you are serving God. But in God's mind, you are doing these things for no reason. Para bang, ang ginagawa ng mga to? Nag-offer? Para kanino? Hindi naman numaabot sa akin, hindi ko naman tinatanggap. Anong ginagawa niya? Kumakanta dyan, birit-birit pa. Hindi ko naman tinatanggap yung awit niya. Anong ginagawa niya? Ang daming binibigay na tithes. Hindi ko naman tinatanggap yung pera niya. Why? Because we're not right with God. So Malachi said, if ganyan lang din ang gagawin, why don't we just shut the doors? Why don't we just stop offering to God? Why? Because it's better. It's better to not just, well, wag na, na lang tayong magsimba kung magsisimba lang naman tayo half-heartedly. Sayang lang yung oras natin. Nakapag-lucky mall pa sana tayo, mas okay pa. Di ba? Tama naman po. Kung hindi rin naman tatanggapin ng Panginoon ang ating pagsamba, wag na lang po tayong sumamba. 
Kung hindi rin naman tatanggapin ng ating Panginoon ang ating pag-preach, huwag na lang po tayo mag-preach. Kung hindi lang po tatanggapin ng Panginoon ang ating pag-awit, huwag ka na lang umawit. Why? You're wasting your time. You have uh, uh, other better things to do. And this is something that is, uh, what do you call this, na reasonable naman. Yung, re- yung reason sa kanila na malakay. If you're just going to do this, if you're not going to give your best, then better not to do it at all. If you're not willing to spend time to practice, do not sing for God. If, you, if you're not willing to spend hours and hours and hours studying the Word of God, don't preach behind the pulpit. Why? Because God will not accept that. If you're just going to pirate someone behind the pulpit and just repeat something that you, you have read and, not ha- and did not give effort in studying the Word of God, that is all for naught. You're doing it for nothing. Better not preach at all. If you're, if you're bored or if, if, you, if you think that it's just a duty for you to go to the outreach and teach the children and you're not doing it because of your love for God, better not go anymore. Maglaba ka na lang. Diba? Mag-prepare ka na lang ng lesson plan mo for Monday. Mas okay pa yun sa'yo dahil walang kapakinabang sa'yo o sa Panginoon ang half-hearted service. Walang pakinabang sa'yo o sa Panginoon ang, ang paglilingkod sa Kanya na hindi mo naman binibigay ang iyong the best. That's why, malaki sa'yo, just close it. Sarado na lang. Patayin nyo na yung apoy. Wala rin naman mangyayari. Sayang lang ang ating panahon. And, and God was willing to close the temple to stop His people from worshiping Him just because they're not doing it right. Just because God is willing to do that. But God will not be without worship. Why? Because here in verse 11, For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. So God said, even if you do not worship me, one day will come when people all around the world will worship my holy name. I do not need you. I'm giving you this privilege, this opportunity to be able to worship me and to serve me and to offer to me, but you are wasting it. Now, it's it's better for you to just close the doors because I will open the door to other people. And other people will worship me. Minsan po kasi ganun ang ugali natin. Kala natin utang ng loob ng Panginoon sa atin ang ginagawa natin. We think God owes us for preaching. We think God owes us for singing. We think God owes us for going to the outreach and teaching the children. These are mere privileges God is giving to us. And we are wasting it, ladies and gentlemen. We're not giving our best anymore. And God is saying, I don't need that. I can give that opportunity to other people. That is what God is saying here. Verse 12, But ye have profaned it, in that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat is contemptible. Sadly, the Israelites will realize this a uh, few hundred years in the future from this. Marirealize nila kung papaano na malayo at tahimik ang Panginoon sa kanila. And the challenge here this morning is, wag na po nating hayaan dumating sa ganung punto ang ating paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Na hindi na po tayo nire-rebuke na hindi na po tayo kinakausap ng Banal na Spirito, na hindi na po tayo na chinachallenge ng Word of God. Why? Because we have kept our hearts to be, uh, we have hardened our hearts, we have closed our ears to the Word of God that, that, that God will just say, okay, it's up to you. I'll open this opportunity to other people. Let's not waste that opportunity. Here in verse number 12, to, uh, 12 But ye have profaned it. In that you say the, te- the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruit thereof, even his meat is contemptible. So verse 13, Ye all said also, Behold, what a weariness is it. Sabi nila, nakakapagod lang. Why? Because that is already their attitude towards the serving God. And ye have snuffed at it saith the Lord of hosts. And ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick, and that ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand? Say the Lord. Ano po yung resulta ng, ng, ng uh, what is the result of service and, and worship to God? That is just uh, 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 traditional na lang. That is just, uh, what they call this, uh, routine na lang. Ang resulta ay a service that is not, uh, that is not our best. Kunyari, if we think that service, wala naman tayo mapapala dito sa service. Kung isipin natin na uh, waste of time lang ang pagpunta sa, sa service at pangkinisalta ng Panginoon, we're not going to give our best. And this is one of the saddest uh, 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 phrase here. Sabi nila, Behold, and you also said, Behold, what a weariness is it. Nakakapagod na lang ang ginagawa natin. Every day, we offer. Every day we burn sacrifices. Every day we do this. Every day we do that. It's so tiring. We don't even get any benefits from it. 
Ulit-ulit na lang, ulit-ulit na lang. Why? It's a condition of their heart. They don't realize the privilege that they have by being able to offer to God. Not even the whole nation has that privilege. Only this priest has that privilege. To be close to God, to be in the temple, to be the ones offering, to be the ones uh, really serving God, uh, to be the ones nearest to God. But they are saying that it's a waste of time. Nakakapagod. And sometimes this happens to us as believers as well. Kakapagod mag-prepare ng preaching. Nakakapagod mag-practice for singing. Nakakapagod na lang umaten palagi. Nakakapagod mag-outreach. Nakakapagod. Kaya tayo napapagod. Bakit? Kasi hindi natin mahal ang ginagawa natin. And we don't love the ones that we are doing it for. We don't really do that. And that happens to us because we are so far away from God that we don't realize this happening to us as well. As I have said, our attitude towards the ministry is para bang pakinabang ng Panginoon tayo sa ministry. Alam niyo, don't we realize that God doesn't need any of us here today? God can change our pastor in, in a blink of an eye. He doesn't need him. It's just a privilege that we can be used of God. And we are wasting this opportunity by not giving our best every step of the way. We're wasting that. Uh, being a, a preacher is a great privilege to be able to stand behind the pulpit and preach the Word of God. And sometimes we're wasting it because we're not giving our best to God. It's a privilege to be a member of the choir and we will waste it if we will not give our best to God. It is a privilege to be able to go out there in villages and to share the gospel to people who need the gospel but we are wasting it if we're not giving our best. Kaya nga po sabi ni Malakay, kung hindi nyo rin lang bibigay ang best nyo, wag na lang. Why? Because God is not accepting it anyway. Sana binurger king mo na lang yung offering mo. Sana binili mo na lang ng cellphone. Why? Kasi parang, parang tinapon mo lang yung pera, hindi naman tinanggap ng Panginoon. Bakit? Kasi hindi po tama ang ating puso. Hindi po tama ang ating relasyon sa Panginoon. And my challenge to you today is, don't let this happen sa atin. Don't let this happen na dumating sa time na napaka-natural na lang po sa atin ang lackadaisical service to God. Now, you're not doing it. That's why I'm, I'm even uh, always telling the homeboys, after the service, Already clean the, clean the house of God. Why? Because that is showing that you really care for the things of God. But if, if para kung natural na lang sa'yo na madumi ang church, madumi ang, uh, pal, uh, ang, ang, ang tahanan ng Panginoon, para bang pag pinagalitan ka, oh, Sunday pa naman ng service eh. Eh di hayaan mo na lang Monday to Saturday na malinis, na madumi ito. Diba, nagkakaroon po tayo ng ganong klaseng ugali. Na sita tayo na meron tayong hindi ginawang tama, imbes na, uh, imbes na mag-repent tayo at ayusin natin sa susunod, Minsan magagalit pa tayo. And I experienced this a lot. Why? Because hindi ako galit sa nagsalita sa akin. Galit ako na bakit nga ba ganun? Bakit nga ba hindi ko ma-realize? Bakit nga ba uh, uh, dumating ako sa ganung klaseng pagkakataon? And I don't find it in me the desire to make it right. And that is something that is very frustrating as a believer. That's why uh, uh, I hope that this, this chapter can be a challenge to us. To give our best to the Lord. The world doesn't honor people who do not give their best. The world recognizes people who are the best at what they do. That's why when you say basketball, you know Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, all of, this, all of these things. Why? Because they're the people who gave their all to the sport. If you say football, you know Ronaldo, uh, uh, Messi, that's all I know. Because uh, all I know is they're the ones who give their best to the sport. And if the world standard for worldly things is that, how much more yung standard natin dapat sa, salita, sa, sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Our standard should only be the best. And if I will not give my best, and I'm sure that I'm not giving my best to God, Lord, please change my heart. Give me that desire to give my best in everything I do so that I will not be wasting my time here. And I hope and I pray as we start this new year, lahat po ng ginagawa natin, whether you're a preacher, whether you're a choir member, whether you're going to the outreach, we decide and tell God, Lord, help me do my best in everything. Huwag po akong dumating sa, sa panahon na ulit-ulit na lang at mapapagod po ako. Kasi po minsan, I don't know, our hearts condemn us. Alam niyo po yan, pagka meron tayong ginawa na hindi tama, alam natin na hindi yun yung the best para sa Panginoon. Wala na yung puso natin sa ginagawa natin. Our hearts will condemn us. And that's when we start to get bored. That's when we start to get tired of what we're doing. And I don't know why we keep on doing it. Maybe looking at the priest here, they said that what weariness, nakakapagod. But they're still doing it. Why? There's benefit. 
Because they benefit from the offering of the people, they benefit from the food, the money that they receive from the people, they're running uh, the finances uh, in the temple. There's a benefit. Kaya po kahit na pagod na sila, kahit para, even though in their mind, they don't, uh, they, uh, uh, what they call this, uh, serving the Lord is tiresome, they keep on doing it. Why? Kasi merong benefit. Sana po hindi po tayo din dumating sa ganung panahon na kahit na wala na yung puso ko sa ginagawa ko, pagod na ako sa ginagawa ko pero hindi ko titigilan bakit? May benefit. Baka tanggalin ako sa Florida. Baka mawalan ako ng fellowship dito. Check our hearts. Baka po ganun na lang ang ating uh, uh, reason why we're doing it. And if that is the reason, it's never too late to repent and to really ask God to put, place our hearts in the right uh, place and fix our relationship with God and just continue to give our best because we love God in the ministry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this morning, for the uh, message and uh, we even for the chapter that we have read.